Hey everyone. tuning in from and let me know if you can hear me okay as well both my talking and my playing starting off with a little improvised meditation for you some more people here now and you can hear me okay fantastic wonderful to see you from London Italy France it's about 3 p.m. where I am here on the East Coast of the United States so let me know where you're tuning in from it's one of the things I love the most about these live streams is that you get to join me from all over the world and that's really the beauty of music to me, that we all get to join together and enjoy it no matter where we are in the world. It's kind of the, the miracle of recorded sound and, of course, the internet at its best. So let me know where you're tuning in from. It's always a pleasure to see you. I'm just going to play for you a little bit more and then we're going to get to our discussion today of five guitar solos that have changed everything for me.
Very nice. I hope you liked it. Well, it's wonderful to see all of you here. As I said, it's always such a pleasure to be joined by all of you on my live stream. Um, I'm going to be doing this more and more, and it's always wonderful to see you. So keep letting me know where you're tuning in from. Colombia, Japan, Lisbon, Portugal, an American in Tokyo, wonderful, Brazil, France, Germany, Netherlands, Algeria, oh, North Africa, sorry. Um, wonderful to see everyone here. Always a pleasure. So please keep letting me know where you're tuning in from. It's just a real joy. So today we're going to be talking about five guitar solos that change the way that I see the guitar. And, um, you know, some of you might be familiar with some of these guitar solos and some of you might not. Either way, jump in the chat and let me know uh, whether you know these solos, whether you like them. And feel free to let me know what some of your favorite solos are because, as always, when I go live here, I like to share some of my favorites, but then I want to hear some of your favorites too. And we're going to jump in the chat and talk about it all. So, not just about me, I want to find out what you like too because uh, I might learn something, you know. I, I know a lot of music, but I don't know everything. So I'd love to know what you like to listen to as well. So yeah, keep jumping in and letting me know. Hi from Singapore, wonderful to see you. Um, also, this won't be a list of like classic rock guitar solos, like a top five guitar solos of all time thing. I think there are a lot of great videos about that sort of stuff. Um, but this will be more about uh, things that I've enjoyed over the years that had a big impact on me and probably have a connection to improvised guitar playing in one way or another. So yeah, thank you as well for supporting my channel by being here. Uh, this channel doesn't have any sponsors. I always try to make it very clear uh, that uh, you know I don't really have any ulterior motives with pushing stuff and I don't have any sponsors for this channel. So it is your support that makes me able to provide playing videos and lessons. So thank you for your support. And if you'd consider becoming a member, that's always certainly welcome. But it's wonderful to just have you here anyway. Also, for the next 48 hours, you can get 20% off my classic online courses and bundle packages at benyunson.com with the code April 2023. And it's there in the chat. And say hi to Vienna Lorraine, who's moderating today. And uh, Vienna is going to put that code in the chat for you as well if you're interested in checking out my classic bundle packages, online courses, my albums, and transcriptions at benyunson.com. So make sure to check that out. April 2023 is the code for the next 48 hours only. And also make sure to check out my new website, bensguitarclub.com, which has uh, my latest guitar masterclasses, including 10 etudes for guitar improvisation, which you can also get as part of my new modern soloing bundle. So I always appreciate your support and I always love to share whatever it is that I know in terms of guitar knowledge with you. So I hope you enjoy it. So let's get down to it. Wonderful to see you all here from Milano. Wonderful to see it. The fundamental solo that changed my playing was Pink Floyd. Fantastic. Yeah, Pink Floyd is wonderful. Uh, my most recent solo that blew my mind was Jeff Beck's uh, Cause We've Ended As Lovers, the uh, track six off Blow By Blow, one of the greatest uh, albums and one of my favorite solos. I, I recorded a version of um, Cause We've Ended As Lovers on my album Ace, which uh, certainly before Jeff had left us, it was kind of a tribute to Jeff and the, the monumental impact that he had had on my playing. So. Cause We've Ended As Lovers is a big one for me too. So let's get into it. Uh, now it's hard for me to pick just five solos. Um, and the following solos will really be in no particular order. I don't know if I can, um, I don't know if I can really put them from five to one, but uh, you know, it's, it's a list of five. So let's just go with that. <laughs> and we're gonna start with number five, which is, uh, a solo by Wes Montgomery, who is one of the great jazz guitarists and really just one of the great guitarists of all time. Uh, and it's a solo from the album Bumpin' uh, from 1965, which people can be a bit divided on because of the nature of the sort of orchestral arrangements. 
uh, which is not everyone's cup of tea, but I think that Don Sebesky uh, did some of the most beautiful orchestral arrangements that complemented Wes's beautiful playing just so well. And uh, in some years after that, you would hear Klaus Ogerman doing beautiful orchestral arrangements with uh, uh, George Benson on Breezen and uh, I love that style of orchestral arrangement with the uh, classic jazz guitar sound. Of course, Wes had the beautiful octaves, which I'll only ever be able to do a knockoff copy of. No one really did it as well as Wes. But anyway, the solo is track seven off Bumpin' and it's called Here's That Rainy Day and it's a standard. And um, you know, you hear Wes playing the beautiful octaves and all that kind of stuff, but more than anything, here's that rainy day off Bumpin'. For me, is an example of Wes's beautiful um, <sighs> melodic language. You know, we love Wes for the chord solos, the thumb, the octaves, but for me, the real attraction of Wes Montgomery's playing is the beautiful melodic language that you can hear had such a resonating impact on guitarists, uh, particularly in the jazz world, but not limited to just the jazz world for many, many decades to come. And, uh, you know, beautiful opening phrase. Beautiful. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to play it quite as well as Wes did on the genuine article of the album itself. But uh, wonderful phrasing, wonderful melodic ideas, and I just couldn't recommend it uh, enough. That to me is one of the most magical recorded guitar solos in history. Here's That Rainy Day by Wes Montgomery. And really when you're talking about Wes, it's very hard to pick just one solo because I mean you've got his entire discography packed into a span of about 11 years, uh, 10 or 11 years before he sadly left us in 1968. Um, but to change the guitar in such a short span of time of roughly a decade uh, is just phenomenal. So go and check that one out. And let me know if you have a favorite Wes Montgomery solo. Jumping in the chat here, um, hi Julian from Germany. Um, let's see what we have here. Uh, yes, thematic development. Wes was a master of that. My favorite solo of his on No Blues. Absolutely, No Blues from uh, Smoking at the Half Note, which is just wonderful. Um, Winston Cali trio with Wes. Uh, I think you're absolutely right. Thematic development to me is the overarching concept in Wes's soloing that just I think you can uh, hear that in Pat Metheny's playing, certainly, though, of course, Pat has uh, his own way of playing, no question about it. But I think that element of thematic development, I'm not sure if anyone in the guitar realm in improvised music had done that uh, on quite a monumental, as much of a mon monumental scale as Wes up to that point. So I agree completely. And his time feel. Certainly right, absolutely. So yeah, uh, let's move on to the next one. And by the way, if you have any thoughts about Wes, we're going to come back to this. If you're just tuning in now, we're talking about five guitar solos that really had a huge impact on my playing. And uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on these solos. And I'd love to know the solos that uh, impacted you as well. So just let me know. Hi. The Dominican Republic, wonderful to see you. Uh, let's shift gears a little bit now and go to number four. So not quite the same as Wes. Now we're going to pick a particular piece of music uh, that had a really big impact on me when I was sort of uh, getting into improvised guitar solos, heading into uh, jazz and improvised music. Um, not in quite the same way as Wes Montgomery, but uh, I had been a big fusion type listener and I was wanting to find out more about straight ahead jazz, but before that I was listening to Rush Hour by the Yellow Jackets, which if you know about the early Yellow Jackets, uh, Robin Ford was of course the guitarist. 
and the original Yellow Jackets uh, was the band on Robin Ford's album The Inside Story from 1979. Uh, then 81 came around and the Yellow Jackets put out the first record and Rush Hour track four off that album has one of what I believe is Robin Ford's best solos. And uh, this was a really big solo for me, as I mentioned, when I was sort of trying to find out more about improvised music. So it sort of bridged the gap between some of the more overdriven sounds uh, that I'd enjoyed hearing from, let's say, someone like Jeff Beck, but was improvised in a way that I just hadn't heard before. So all of a sudden, it's kind of in this D flat changes were very much sort of using more modern harmony and um, that was one of Robin's lines which he brought this kind of blues meets bebop thing to his soloing approach at that time and you should check out the solo he takes a great solo in the middle and then comes back for more at the end That's one of the solo lines that I remember the most. And when I was trying to find out more about improvised lines, to hear that kind of chromatic scale movement that more or less comes from bebop, I hadn't really heard that a whole lot. So it was just amazing how cohesively he had put that together in terms of language. Uh, at that time and it, it had such a huge impact on me and I, I think still stands as such an amazing period in Robin Ford's uh, evolution as a player. He's gone into many different uh, directions in the I suppose 40 or so years that have passed since that record came out but I think it can't be underestimated the monumental impact that had and probably continues to have on a lot of guitarists. So, yeah, I, I really love that. So what do we have here in the chat? Uh, Robin Ford with Jing Chi was amazing. Unreal uh, playing on there. Absolutely, Jing Chi was a, an amazing trio, I, I think. Um, and some of Robin's more recent work, certainly in contrast with when the Yellow Jackets came out. So, yeah, that's wonderful playing as well. And yes, uh, Speaking of West Coast stuff, Tribal Tech, Scott, I mean, Scott Henderson is just brilliant and another great hero of mine. So, um, yeah, so that would be number four. Let's go to number three. Uh, and it's going to be a Steely Dan solo uh, because Steely Dan has had such a big impact on my playing and it would be remiss of me not to discuss a bit of Steely Dan. But before we do that, if you're just tuning in, um, make sure to check out Tw uh, for the next 48 hours, you can get 20% off my classic online courses and bundle packages at benyunson.com with the code APRIL2023. Uh, if you'd like to check out my How to Practice bundle, my uh, mini lesson bundle, and of course my online courses, transcriptions, and my albums at benyunson.com, use the code APRIL2023. It'll be available for the next 48 hours if you want to check it out. And also make sure to check out my new website, bensguitarclub.com, uh, which has my latest guitar masterclasses, including 10 etudes for guitar improvisation, which you can also get as part of the modern soloing bundle. So check out bensguitarclub.com. It's all in the description below. And uh, the, our moderator today, Vienna Lorraine, has put it in the chat. Say hi to Vienna for us. And uh, yeah, check it out, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. So I promised that number three would be a Steely Dan solo, and it is Josie off Asia, which is one of my favorites. Now, very interesting thing about the Steely Dan album Asia is that the bulk of the solos are actually taken by Walter Becker. Now, especially considering the abundance of great guitarists on the album Asia, I can think of Larry Carlton, Dean Parks, Lee Rittenau, Jay Graydon, uh, the great Denny, D Denny Diaz, who was an original Steely Dan member, 
There's no shortage of great guitarists on that album to begin with. Um, but Walter Becker, to me, has always been a really underrated guitar player in his own right. And of course, he played bass and uh, co-wrote the songs as well. Um, but on Josie, this was one of the first guitar solos that I ever learnt. And interestingly, over that uh, B7 sharp 9 chord before we go into the E minor, without the delay, of course, which uh, Dean Park so beautifully demonstrated on the classic albums video for Asia. Um, I think this was one of Walter Becker's best solos. You know, he starts off with the... All these really interesting intervals, which uh, are quite unusual, you know, quite unusual, especially to hear on a kind of song that you would have heard on the radio at some point in time. Bluesy, a little bit jazzy. You can hear he's playing it on a guitar that's uh, probably got single coil pickups. And it's just such a clear, beautiful uh, sound. And it's also very interesting to note that Walter Becker played the bulk of the guitar solos on Asia uh, on uh, Home at Last, I Got the News, and Josie, the final three tracks on the second side. And um, aside from Jay Graydon's solo on Peg and Denny Diaz showing up, sort of dueling with Walter Becker on the title track Asia, Walter does take the bulk of the solos on that album, and I think it's really interesting. I think he plays really great. Um, so that's got to be one of Walter Becker's best guitar solos, and uh, I, I really love it. It's just so fresh sounding, even today, and it came out in 1977. So uh, we're covering a lot of ground here today, from Wes Montgomery to Robin Ford to Walter Becker. Where are we going to go next? And by the way, feel free to jump in the chat. Let me know what you think about these solos. Let me know what you think some of your favorite solos are. And uh, we're going to have a big chat about all of this in just a few minutes once I've told you uh, what my favorites are. And of course I have more than just five favorites, but these are just some of my real favorites. So yeah. There's an interesting question. What, what are your thoughts on the Mu? I, I always uh, thought of it as the Mu major or Mu major. I mean, I have an Australian accent, so I probably say Mu major. But I, for anyone who's wondering what that is, that's very common in the sort of Steely Dan sound, which my understanding of the sort of Steely Dan Mu major chord is uh, kind of an add two chord. Like if we've got a C major triad. <laughs> You add the D, the two, so it's not just one, three, five, it's sort of, we've got the one, two, and the three, and the five. And then you can also uh, run it off the third degree of the chord. That's my understanding of the Steely Dan Mu, Mu Major or Mu Major, however you want to say it. It's a beautiful sound. All right, number two uh, is from John Schofield, and I love John Schofield, one of the uh, most important guitarists uh, in my life as a listener, one of the most important guitarists, full stop, if you ask me. And this was the first solo I ever transcribed um, at the suggestion of my teacher when I was a teenager, the great Australian guitarist Peter Petrucci. Um, and Peter, when I was first wanting to really get into some jazz language, said, OK, well, my recommendation for, you to, for something to transcribe would be Secret Love by John Schofield, which is the second track off his album Flat Out from 89, it was recorded at the end of 88, but it came out in 89. It was his last album for Grammar Vision. And a lot of it is a trio affair, um, some of which has uh, Terry Lynn Carrington playing drums on it, which um, 
I was very fortunate to play a lot with Terry Lynn Carrington uh, some years later after I had heard this. And um, I talked about this with Terry and had a laugh about how this was uh, such a monumental recording for me that she played drums on, which was just fantastic. Um, but yeah, this was the first solo I ever transcribed. And Secret Love of co is, of course, a uh, great standard. And I think this is just a wonderful example of John Schofield employing some of the best elements of his playing. Uh, it starts off with wonderful melody. Uh, where was it? Just beautiful opening phrase that I can um, still recall even to this day. And making it through the changes so clearly uh, and really letting a story unfold throughout those changes, throwing in beautiful chord voicings, great lines, just really playing so freely in the chord changes. I, I love it so much. And um, that one I really recommend you check out. So that was Secret Love by John Schofield off the album Flat Out. The final one, number one for me, is uh, a Pat Metheny solo. And the song is called The Road to You, which is one of his beautiful ballads. And, you know, some of you might have seen me uh, playing fast on the internet and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> And as I do love great technique. I love fast tempos. I love um, being able to let a story unfold at faster tempos. But probably more than anything, I really am a, a real sucker for ballads. I love ballads and melody. Melody is really what it's all about for me. And The Road to You is one of Pat's most beautiful ballads, I think. And some of his most beautiful ballad playing. Now, this is from the live album of the same name, The Road to You, from 1993, but I actually discovered this performance on uh, a video, a VHS tape of the Pat Metheny group uh, called More Travels, which came out also in, I think, 1992 or 93. Um, I got it as a sort of second-hand copy because by the time I was a teenager, you couldn't really get it anymore. Um, but it was just such a special video, More Travels, by the Pat Metheny group. And uh, it's the same version on the video and on the album. Um, but it's just some of Pat's most beautiful motivic playing. Uh, and I absolutely suggest you try and play it. I'm actually, or try and listen to it, I'm, I'm actually not going to play any little fragments of the solo because it's just... Um, so beautiful. I, I'm going to let you list, do the listening to that one. Beautiful ballad playing, melodies, lines, and most importantly, dynamics. I think it's Pat at his motivic, thematic best. So do yourself a favor and listen to Pat's solo on The Road to You from 1993. Just absolutely stunning ballad playing and um, one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. So uh, yeah, so that is my five. Let's uh, go through them once more. Number five was uh, in no particular order, I should say. Here's That Rainy Day by Wes Montgomery from his album Bumpin' in 1965. Uh, switching gears completely to Rush Hour by uh, The Yellow Jackets, which has Robin Ford at his, uh, you know, just some of his best playing, 1981. Um, shifting gears once again. Uh, Josie by Steely Dan. Steely Dan was such an important thing for me, which uh, led me to a lot more uh, sort of harmonically complex music. Um, it served as a bridge to essentially jazz and complicated harmonic music. Uh, Walter Becker playing that solo on Josie. The second one was Secret Love by John Schofield from his album Flat Out. And the first one was The Road to You by Pat Metheny from the album of the same name. So yeah, beautiful. <laughs> you gotta go and check it out. So 
while I'm still here with you, make sure you let me know what it is that you've been listening to. Feel uh, free to jump in the chat and um, let me know. So Julian, um, you mentioned the Django Reinhardt solo over Limehouse Blues. Um, that is a classic one. I haven't heard that in a long, long time, but um, a fantastic example. So make sure you let me know what you've been listening to. Um, Mark, recently been listening to uh, Digging uh, McLaughlin, Dino de Paco de Lucia. Yeah, is that the one uh, Friday night in San Francisco? Tell me if that's the one. I uh, listened to that a long time ago and it's, it's phenomenal playing. Really quite amazing. Um, let's see what else we have here in the chat. Yes, we were talking a moment about Tribal Tech, Scott Henderson. Uh, there was an album called um, Dr. He from the 80s, which was really a huge one. Uh, I, I just think that's a fantastic record. And Scott Henderson's playing with both uh, Chick Corea and then later Joe Zavinal really had an impact on me as well. You know, Scott is such a phenomenal player in his own right. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, uh, Denny Zeitlin. Yes, not jazz guitar, but wonderful playing. I agree. That's fantastic. Uh, Jimmy Rosenberg and um, John McLaughlin, absolutely, both fantastic choices. So, yeah, and let me know if there are any particular solos that had a big impact on you. Speaking of which, uh, speaking of John McLaughlin, uh, he had a wonderful track that I think I've probably mentioned before off uh, his album, I think it was Electric Guitarist. It was a track with uh, Carlos Santana called Friendship. Beautiful melody, really fantastic. You know, I, I love that one. <laughs> Just a really beautiful song um, and a phenomenal performance from uh, Carlos Santana and also John. Uh, really worth checking out. I, I love that. So fantastic. Frank Gambale, of course. Frank is wonderful. I saw Frank uh, play live when I was 17 in Melbourne, Australia. He was playing with Chick Corea, a really interesting band with Tal Wilkenfeld, Chick Corea, and Antonio Sanchez, and of course Frank on guitar. And that was just a spectacular show. Everyone was playing at their best. I really loved it. It was, it was excellent. Um, and that's just uh, one occasion. I mean, that was some time ago, but Frank was on fire that night, so I loved that, absolutely. So we might leave it here, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed my little uh, presentation of uh, some of my favorite guitar solos, some of the ones that um, have had a big impact on me. Before we uh, finish off, uh, I always appreciate your support of my channel. This is an independent channel, and... Uh, I always appreciate your support. Your support helps me keep doing this. So uh, if you consider becoming a member or check out my online courses and bundle packages at benyinson.com, which you can get 20% off with for the next 48 hours with the code April 2023. And also check out my new guitar masterclasses at bensguitarclub.com, including the new modern soloing bundle. I always appreciate your support. Your support helps me keep doing this. Uh, and I really hope you enjoy what I'm uh, offering to you. And always feel free to send me a message and tell me what you'd like to hear me playing and presenting on my channel because I do love hearing from you. It's one of the great things about this time we live in. So let me do a bit of playing for you and then we'll wind it up.
All right, everyone. Thanks again for joining me. Make sure to check out my 20% off with the code April2023 at benyunson.com for my classic online courses, bundle packages, how to practice bundle, mini lesson bundle, online courses, albums, transcriptions, and join me at bensguitarclub.com as well. Thank you again, everyone, and I'll see you very soon. Thank you again. Bye.